Welcome one and all to Nailed. Now, before you ask, this isn't a video game adaption of trouble magnet Mel Gibson's epic film The Passion of the Christ. It is in fact a high octane, pedal to the metal, off-road speed fest. As you cling onto your ATV or motocross bike for dear life, Nailed sees you hurtle around roller coaster tastic racetracks, dodging all types of bone breaking hazards and hitting jumps that come flying at you faster than the speed of sound. You may think I'm over exaggerating, but the sense of speed in this game is insane. It's easily one of the fastest races I have played in a long time, so motion sickness sufferers beware. The tracks will twist and turn with only a split second's notice. You'll be thrown up huge ramps only to be catapulted towards gigantic wind turbines and then you'll plummet down near bottomless caverns in your effort to place first and win that all-important gold trophy. You'll need cat-like reflexes if you want to make it round any of the huge tracks without getting well and truly nailed. Fans of arcade extreme off-road racing titles such as MotorStorm or Pure will feel instantly at home with Nailed. The over-the-top locations look similar, the soundtracks are all full of angsty rock anthems, and to top it all off they all feature a healthy amount of nitro boosting. If you think Nailed is fast normally, then you'll be in for a shock the first time you press that boost button. It makes you go ridiculously fast, and as the G-Force takes effect, the screen turns grey and begins vibrating, accentuating the fact that your little vehicle is just about to break the sound barrier and send you shooting off into space. Honestly, this ain't no Sunday drive. It's an assault on the senses which sees you turbo jumping over moving trains, breaking the laws of physics by changing direction in mid-air to dodge hot air balloons as they rise up from below you, and avoiding oncoming locomotives by driving up the curved walls of train tunnels. Your boost meter can be charged quite easily by pulling off perfect landings, popping wheelies, driving through special gates, and even jumping through fiery rings. Ooh, uh. But inexplicably not by pulling off wonder stunts a la pure. For a game that sees you spend a large percentage of your playtime flying through the air, it seems very peculiar that the developers haven't put in the option to pull off special stunts by, say, pushing the right thumbstick in a certain direction. It doesn't really make much sense, unless the idea was to strip the game down to a bare-bones speed fest that just concentrated on the racing and not the gravity-defying mid-air moves. But still, in reality, it just serves to make the game feel strangely empty and renders the mahoosive jumps slightly pointless. There are three main game modes in total, Tournament, which is your main game, Off-Road, which holds your time attacks, quick races and custom tournaments, and then of course the multiplayer, which lets you jump online with up to 12 people. No split-screen multiplayer though, which sucks. The tracks you race around are massive, and the exciting set pieces, huge plummeting drops, jumps over massive canyons, and countless different routes and hidden shortcuts really rev up the excitement factor and make each race a white-knuckle ride. At one point in the game, a gigantic passenger jet flew so close to the track I could have almost bunny hopped onto the wing, and I was so impressed at the visual spectacle it created that I totally took my eyes off the road, and the next thing I knew my rider was face-planting a nearby tree. Owie! The most impressive tracks in the game are the ones that feature only one lap. These are the ones that include the craziest jumps and the coolest obstacles, but sadly there is only a small number of these available. In fact, the total number of tracks is very low, and it won't be long until you've played every one, meaning even the most breathtaking tracks will get boring after a short while. Graphically, the game is very nice. It doesn't look as polished as Pure, or as gritty as MotorStorm, but it does have a certain charm. I can't help thinking though that the bland grey-brown colour palette could have been much nicer if it was full of bright, vibrant colours to complement the hectic action, but I guess you can't have everything. Wiping out or getting nailed happens a lot in this game, especially when you first play and you don't know your way around the tracks. The collision detection can be a bit hit and miss though, if you excuse the pun. Sometimes the slightest brush against an object will knock you off your metallic steed, while other times you can slam head first into walls and the vehicle will come to a complete stop or just flip in a completely impossible way so you're pointing back in the direction you should be heading. The game is not without its glitches either, with some crashes leaving you stuck on or even in objects. Check this out for an example. 
Ooh, thank Mel Gibson for the respawn button. Getting nailed will stop you racing for a short amount of time before you are placed back on the track, and in single player mode there doesn't seem to be any kind of penalty for resetting the action. Amazingly, there's even been more than one occasion where I've crashed and then respawned in first position. Which is nice, but not if you're looking for a challenge. Which brings me to my next point. Nailed is a very easy game. During the tournament, AI racers pootle along at a leisurely pace, never providing much of a challenge, especially in the first few leagues, and actually on many tracks after the first lap, I hardly saw them again as I was so far in the lead. Even multiple crashes didn't give them a chance to catch up, so winning a race felt less like an accomplishment and more like a chore. Ok, so I touched on multiplayer earlier, but seeing as the best bit of most racing games is when you go up against your fellow humans, it's probably best if I let you know what to expect from the online portion of Nailed. Jump into multiplayer and you'll find that every track in the game is open and ready to race on, either in quick matches or custom games. You can customise your matches to choose what tracks you race on, and also add a couple of mutators, which change the rules of the game, such as the Boost Madness mutator, which gives you infinite nitro and lets you go full throttle for as long as you want, or until you crash into a wall. Inexplicably, once you create or join a match and the game lobby is active, the lobby leader has no option to change the track or race mode. This means if you want to change to a new map or mix up the mutators, you will have to exit out of the lobby and set it up all over again. If you don't, then chances are you'll end up playing the same track over and over again until the end of time or until you have to go downstairs for your dinner. Not only is this incredibly annoying, it's also one of the stupidest multiplayer design choices of recent times. There really is no excuse for the multiplayer lobbies to be so badly implemented. I just can't see the point to it, and this could be one of the reasons why even though the game has been out in America since November last year, it is still very hard to find a decent online match. Sure, I encountered no lag during my time online, which is a massive plus, but that's kind of to be expected when hardly anyone else is online racing. In my opinion, Nailed is a massively missed opportunity. Yes, it's very easy to pick up and play, and for the first five or six hours it's really good fun. It's one of those races that I just love. You know, the ones where you just hold down the accelerator and never let go. Trouble is, its flashy exterior hides a shallow gaming experience that will get boring very quickly. It would have been great if the developers had included some road rash style, punch a guy off his bike elements, and the lack of stunts is just puzzling as is the supremely bad design of the multiplayer lobby system. Fingers crossed that in the future we see a sequel to Nailed which addresses these issues, because I would love to see this franchise continue and realise its full potential. <laughs>